What's up, everyone? It's Kanan, and <laughs> it is here, finally, as part of the newest Nintendo Direct. I did not get to watch it because I was at work, and it happened very, very early this morning. Early enough for me, that, for me, Rune Factory Guardians of Azuma announcement trailer, formerly known as Rune Factory Project Dragon. We finally have an announcement trailer. We finally have an announcement year and target time of release. I have not watched this. I just quickly, <coughs> uh, you know, uh, retweeted it and then left my Twitter for most of the day to ignore it because I wanted to do a reaction to this. I am so excited. I'm actually maybe more excited for this than Rune Factory 6, but then again, we don't know anything about Rune Factory 6, except it's going to be set in the same area where 1 through 5 takes place. But this one, this one takes place in the east, where a, a uh, Rune Factory game has never taken part in. And this is going to be somewhat different. I cannot wait. Guardians of Azuma, that's a very um, Japan, kind of like Inazuma in Genshin Impact, which right now Genshin is in um, maintenance for 5.0, though I am I just reached Inazuma last night. I've been playing the game on and off, okay? Just now finally reached Inazuma. So. But yes, it's going to be very, like, it's going to be very um, Eastern themed. But uh, yeah, two minutes and 19 seconds. Let's see what this has got for us. If you guys love Ruby, Final Fantasy XIV, Genshin Impact, Honkai Star Rail, horror games, farming games, make sure you please hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, click that like button, all that good stuff. I am going to go over the trailer a little bit after we watch it. So let's do it. It is going to be on the Switch again. I'm kind of worried about that, but I'll go over that in a little bit. I should have turned captions on, but I'll turn it on for the to rewatch it. Guardians of Azuma. Okay, we've seen this. We've got English voice acting. I love her design so much. So far, I do kind of prefer her voice acting. Yep. No memories. That's it's common. Woolby, okay. A woolly with with ear with ears with horns. I offer these humble words. Great entity. Kaguya. That's their default names. I'm pretty sure you'll be you might be able to rename them. We got some characters in the back. Two protagonists. Okay. I have another request, Earth Dancer. Okay. There's the farming. Okay. Oh, we can actually build stuff? Six gods, okay. So, so six areas? Azuma's gods must perish. Every last one. Okay. Who are you? Anyone who stems the flow of runes must be eliminated. Stop! We don't have to fight. I think we would make a fine team. If you're going, then so am I. Wait a minute. Burn to ash! The barrier is down. Let's dive right in. Kaguya! Okay, so Alright, there was a marriage, so the the names are voice, so no matter what. I guess you remember everything. You might not be able to name the protagonist. And it looks like both protagonists exist regardless of who you play as. Okay, so let's go back here. Let's turn, let's mute, and let's turn closed captions on. Hold on. There is a character that showed up in this trailer. 
I know I wasn't jumping them down, but I was trying to pay attention to everything. Because, I mean, it's not like it's not showing us stuff that we didn't expect. So there's nothing to really scream about. Um, let's see. I want to look up this character real quick because I can't remember her name right off the bat. It was a character from Room Factory 5. I cannot remember her name. <laughs> of course, I type in a certain thing and it gives me something completely different. Because I don't want to just be like, oh, that character from... Room Factory 5. It's been so long, i completely forgotten her name. Ah, there we go. Okay. Alright, so let's scroll. Okay, so Nintendo Switch. So I believe it's also been confirmed that this game will be on Steam, which is great, but... I don't... Like, unless it's a completely... I, I don't know... I don't know how this game is going to run on the original Switch, because the original Switch struggled to play Rune Factory 5, and this game looks like it's going to be more open-worldly. I don't think it's going to be 100% open-world, may, but maybe. But I'm worried about this being on Switch. Yes, games like Tears of the Kingdom is on there, but you got to remember, Tears of the Kingdom and Breath of the Wild were made like by the it studio for Nintendo like the big studio that has a whole lot more tech probably and a lot more funding I think marvelous is the one once again doing the like yeah it, of course it is um, but I don't know who the publisher for um, well for America is I hope it's the same one for five and it might be might be different but it's the same comp same publisher, same developer, I'm pretty sure. So that kind of worries me, but I'm hoping it runs better. That's the one thing I'm hoping for. A calamity that befell the land. The celestial collapse, and it says all four seasons have yet to return to Azuma. So that kind of goes with the theme of Rune Factory is bringing nature back. Um, so, yeah, that fits. So, Rune Factory Guardians of Azuma. And once again, we see the two protagonists fighting here. <laughs> so, for the first time... Enter the eastern land of Azuma, which, like I said, we've never been to the eastern world in Rune Factory. It's always been the western world. So that is definitely going to be a welcome change. So we have Woolby here, I believe its name is, and it is a woolly with horns, with like ram horns. So that is different. A hero with no memories, That that's the same as... Every other Rune Factory game. Rune Factory 1 through 5, character doesn't have their memories. That's that's a common thing in Rune Factory. A descendant of the dragon god, Woolby. Doesn't look like much of a dragon to me, but hey, I mean, I think this character is the white dragon that we see the protagonist riding. So, instead of being an Earth mate, we are Earth Dancers. Emissaries who restore nature to Azuma. So, yes, using this um, Earth Dance. So, yeah, I think Woolby is the dragon. <laughs> um, a land where ruins cease to exist, Azuma. So, yeah, the ruins in Ruin Factory no longer exist in this world. So, not only... So you can't, so an earth mate brings like vitalization to the land. But an earth dancer looks like it might be an earth mate like 
ten times because the land itself does not have ruins. So you're not only going to have to revitalize the land, you have to bring back the seasons, it sounds like. So here is the male protagonist, once again, Subaru. And then we have the female protagonist, Kaguya, and we've got some NPCs in the back. We've got this dark-haired girl, which I can't really tell if they're a child character or an adult. Then we have... Looks like an older character, maybe, right here. And then we've got this character back here with pink hair. This character right here. Oh, right. From what I saw earlier, this might actually be Hina from Rune Factory 5. And it looks like she has grown up. And it looks like that looks like a Seed uniform. So she may have joined Seed by the events of this game. So these titles that don't have a number in them, like Rune Factory Frontier and Rune Factory Tides of Destinies, or Oceans in <laughs> Japan, and now this one. It's not that they're not canon and didn't happen within the timeline of the other games. It's just that they don't have numbered titles. So this is definitely a good few years after the events of Rune Factory 5. We've got another character right here to the left. I don't think we're able to fully see them. Trying to go frame by frame. Okay, yeah. It's like a blonde-haired character. I think it's a, a male character, but I can't say for certain. Two protagonists. So, unlike Rune Factory 4 and Rune Factory 5, where if you play as a male character or a female character, the other protagonist just does not exist. They're the same character, technically. Looks like both protagonists will exist within the world, and whoever you don't choose to play as, they will be like an NPC character on their own. Um, and it looks like, according to a frame later, you may be able to marry the other protagonist if you choose so. But yeah, if you pick the male character, then the female character will just be an NPC that exists in the world who will be part of the story, and the same way with the female protagonist. Um, so here we sh it shows the protagonist being able to make this dead tree that we saw in an earlier frame right here. I believe that's the same tree right up here at, t at the top. Looks like they're able to use their power to bring life to the tree. And it's a pretty, like, cherry blossom tree, almost. So here we've got another uh, little girl character, the older character, and who I believe to be Hina from, or ha Hina, yeah, from uh, Rune Factory 5. We've also got this other pink-haired character, who I'm very sure will be a uh, marriage candidate. I don't know if Hinya will be a marriage candidate. I know a few people will probably be weirded out by that because she was a kid character in another game, but, I mean, she's now an adult, and it's not like it's the protagonist from Rune Factory 5 romancing them. Um, but they, they did a similar thing in Rune Factory 1 and 2, where a kid character, I, be I believe, from Rune Factory 1 was an adult in Rune Factory 2, and you could marry them. There was something strange that happened with it, but I don't remember. I never finished Rune Factory 2. Um, but I have another request from you. Um, and pretty much this is where we get some of the farming gameplay. Clearing a field, watering fields. Um, there is definitely some produce being grown. I don't, it didn't show anything yet as far as I could see about raising livestock or in Rune Factory's case, monsters. But also another interesting thing, it showed us uh, planting down a meal, which I'm guessing 
will allow us not only to farm fields, but we may also be able to build buildings and place them. Now, I'm a little worried about that because I suck at placing buildings and making them look right. <laughs> I kind of miss the farming games where your house, your barn, your, your coop, and all that were just already there. You just uh, increase the size of them. Because I just, I get self-conscious with games like Stardew Valley and um, the um, Pioneers of Olive Town, where you've actually got to place the buildings. I just feel like I never make them look right. But this looks maybe a little bit more toned down, and maybe it's not everything. Maybe it's helping build the villages. I'm not sure. But we get a look at some of the areas here, and this looks interesting. Looks like a port village, maybe, with a with a waterway. This looks more like an autumn-like setting. This right here is like a winter-like village, it looks like, yeah. And Revive Nature, let's get rid of these caps, and it's six gods. So it looks like there's at least six deities that we're going to have to revive. Don't know if any of them will be romanceable or marriage candidates. They might. It looks like a very vast um, cast here of deities. What's this? Yeah, very vast cast. And then we got some story going on here. Yeah, definitely Woolby is the dragon. And I think it shows both protagonists riding that one. So yeah, of course, whoever you decide will get Woolby as the dragon, and the other one will have the darker dragon. Those who seek to conquer. So this looks like definitely some villains. I don't know if this will be like the sec. Like I think the sect empire fail in earlier games. I don't know if this will be like the other Empire from like 5 or if this will, like, it's it's definitely a more technologically advanced Empire that wants to take over um, and crush nature. So, yeah, this will looks like definitely be the villains of the game. Now here, the male character is helping the female protagonist. I'm guessing if you play as the female protagonist, it'll be the other way around. We got some fighting going on here. So it looks like you will be able to definitely wield a sword. You know, not just like the umbrella and those other. Those will probably be more like things to help you bring nature back. We got some more. This dark dragon that the other protagonist has. I'm wondering about that. Yeah, two opposing fates. So who... Whoever the protagonist is will have the white dragon, which is Woolby, and the other one will have this dark one. And I'm guessing you will start off as enemies and then eventually uh, work together. There's this blonde-haired character again. Yeah, let's look at some of these other characters that they showed off. This, yeah, this is definitely Hina from Rune Factory 5, who is now grown up and is a member of Seed. So, following kind of in the footsteps of the protagonist of Rune Factory 5, but she more than likely will be a romance candidate this time around. Um, we got some more fighting with some monsters here. Um, I always say that Rune Factory is definitely... It's got the farming of Story of Seasons, but it's more of an RPG first and a farming game second. Um, and here we are. We got the female protagonist fighting what looks like a giant. Um, yeah, a, a giant. Uh, uh, golly, I've, I've forgotten their names. Like, I just got off work. This is not going up until Wednesday. Um, but, you know, it, it's the sheep. Um, I'm thinking of Woolby, but that's the name of the sheep in this. Oh, man, I'm completely having a brain fart, a bad brain fart. Um, 
So here we got some other characters. So I this all looks like deities, maybe. So maybe this character right here, the pink hair one that we saw at the beginning, maybe she is also a deity. So maybe the deities will be marriageable. I'm not sure. But this um, next one right here, it looks like the male and female protagonist getting married. Or maybe it's something that maybe restore your lost memories or maybe this is them regaining their memories memories and they've got to go through some kind of ceremony to do it um so i don't know if the deities will be marriageable but it definitely looks like the other protagonist will be marriageable if you decide to um so we got some more fighting some really interesting looking bosses or maybe this is the deities maybe you've got to fight them first before they return unleash the secrets of your dragon pact and yeah rune factory guardians of azuma coming spring 2025 so fairly early in 2025 um, and yeah, it is coming to Switch, and I believe I saw that it is also coming to Steam. And there will also be a Earth Dancers edition. They'll come in a box with some good extra goodies. But um, I def like I love Rune Factory, but I think after Rune Factory Five, it needs to stay the course and still have things like same sex marriage in it. So. I want to wait until I get fully excited and see the marriage candidates and get some hopefully clarification on that. Because remember, when Rune Factory 5 first came out in Japan, it did not have same-sex marriage. But the localization team made it to where there would be same-sex marriage in the other versions of the game. And then the J Japanese version added it later. So... As always, I prefer the female protagonist, so I like her design a little bit more, though they're kind of the same. Voice acting, though, so far from what I've heard, I kind of do prefer, prefer the female uh, actor, the actress's um, performance over the males, but that is what it is. So yes, as soon as we get more details, if the game will have same-sex marriage in it, and who the marriage candidates will be. I will definitely do an update video on that. But I am very excited for this. The, I'm not going to say spinoff titles, but the non-numbered titles of Rune Factory games tend to have a lot, uh, they tend to be a lot different than the numbered titles. This definitely looks like it's following in the vein of that, but I'm looking forward to it. I just want to hear some more information soon. But I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please hit the subscribe button, hit that notification bell, click that like button. I said button, subscribe button, hit the like button, hit the notification bell, leave a comment, all that good stuff. As always, guys, this is Kanan. Me and Jess love y'all very, very much. Stay safe out there, take care of yourselves, and I will see you in a stream later today, but also in the next one. See ya.